What you see before you is every championship this promotion has. This man has been the champion longer than anyone. 450 days. Nobody's beating. And tonight, he's got to go a best two out of three. I'll tell you what, Matt Taylor, I don't care if it's two out of three, five out of seven, a hundred out of a million, it don't matter. Because he keeps kicking your ass. And he's going to do it again tonight. And then, and then, Orlando Christopher gets a shot at this. Orlando, there's a reason you're not in the dirty anymore. You didn't have the killer instinct. Who did? Brandon did. He knew how to capitalize on a situation to bring the gold back to the dirty. And then Austin and Idris had to defend their belts and a tag team scramble against other team. every other damn team in this promotion. It's yeah. almost like they're, sure we've they're trying to and it, take yeah. the titles from us. And it's it weird. doesn't matter. It does. Hell, go dig up the Road Warriors. These two guys would beat them. Get the Rock and Roll Express. These two guys would beat them. Get anybody. Get King Kong and Godzilla. These two will beat them. Like that. Whoop it. Whoop the ass. This is it. This bottom line. Champion. 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 And by War 13, I'm going to tell you right now, if nobody beats this man by War 13, he's retiring the belt and never bringing it back. Just like this. You've got no more heroes. I will lay you down and I'll show you how to close your eyes. Dirty Intentions here at the UAW Hall in Lima, Ohio. I am Jimmy McDowell filling in for Michael McCormick. It is my pleasure to be with you this evening. On the way into the ring right now is Tom Williams. All right, Tom. Good to see you. I'm so glad to have you back. For you guys that don't know me, I'm a war wrestling owner. So. <laughs> Many of you guys may not know this, but uh, you know I don't blow smoke up anybody's butt. I tell it like it is. And I don't pull no punches. I graduated here from Lyman Senior in 1991. And over those years, I've traveled around like a gypsy, me and Christine, wherever she's at. We moved like 15 times in 16 years. But no matter what, Lionel was always my home. Every time I think there's a need, I see there's a need in this community, I, I try to step up to the plate. I try to give it back. And I'm going to be 100% real with you guys. Two years ago, I had weight loss surgery over a year and a half, and I've actually dropped 220 pounds. <laughs> Two years ago, my life was nothing but wrestling. That's all I ever thought about. That's all I ever cared about. And my life's changed since then. Well, one thing I've never gotten away from was being able to give back to the community. Me and Christine, we've done this for 14 years, and we've donated back to the community, either for free tickets, whatever, you know, uh, apples, this, that, and the other. We've donated back to this community a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. 
So one of my sponsors, Shane Campbell, where are you at, Shane? That guy, Shane Campbell, he's another graduate from 1991. I've known Shane for 30 years, and I can tell you right now, he's lying with this like I am. So he called me this week, and he said, hey, my son is on the line of senior wrestling team. So, would you be willing to be a sponsor? I said, you already know. I'm there if they need So Shane dug in his pocket and donated money to the Honor Seniors Wrestling Team. But the catch was, is I wanted to acknowledge them young men and the coaches where they at. Right there. They said, why do you still do this? And I said, right here is why I still do this. I do it for the fans. Suddenly some music from the back starts playing. Tom is getting interrupted. is coming from the back.
got a little bit strong there, ladies and gentlemen. I do apologize. The, uh, the rating of this show very quickly went from a G to a PG-13. But right now, after some words of wisdom from War Wrestling owner Tom Williams to the Lima Senior High wrestling team, and uh, after a donation by Tom on behalf of War Wrestling to head coach Paul Fott, Tom is now, Big Tom is now getting arrested by Lima's finest. That is officers, that is deputies from the Allen County Sheriff's Department who are arresting Tom Williams because of an altercation between he and Mr. Hooks earlier this year. Samson. He might be the biggest Samson. 
Yeah, he actually, he might be. He is a rather large individual. No doubt about that. And actually, you know, I, I would believe that Trump is interviewing Vinny. Do you know who he was, do you know who Trump was interviewing yesterday? Naked Cowboy. Dead serious, Naked Cowboy from New York City. This match underway already. Billy Jack not wasting any time, hammering away at the midsection of Jock with a shoulder thrust into the corner. Now throws him head first across the ring. He just did a hip toss. That's Jock's move. He did a, a hip toss with the heads. Would it be a head toss? Is that what we're going to call that, I guess? Regardless, or? is he stealing Jock's stuff? Well, hey, one good turn deserves another. A hard shot to the chest right there, lighting up Jock. A few more of those in the chest might be the same color as his trunks. Up to the back. Oh, yep. I've heard, I've been told that a chop to the back actually hurts more than a chop to the chest. A chop hurts no matter where you get it, Jamie. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's a good point. I'm glad I've never had one. I plan on keeping it that way. Hard into the turnbuckle goes Chop. Right now, Billy Jack in control, uh, really exerting that size advantage. And they're family. And nobody, nobody beats your ass like family. <laughs> that's true. These guys probably had a lot of fights growing up. They probably know each other really well. Billy Jack right now getting the crowd behind him, hammering away at the top of Jock Samson's head. The crowd counting around, counting along, nine and 10. Good thing they stopped before 10, because <laughs> half this crowd can't count that high. Are you saying that the uh, the local Lima School District isn't the greatest in the world? Is yeah, that they're, they're not even good, let alone great. <laughs> Well, Jock Sampson powders to the outside to try and clear the cobwebs. I imagine those uh, closed right fish at the top of the head didn't feel too good. And Jock, what the problem is, is Jock has found a new family. And that's the 450 boys. Look, they're all out there in solidarity. Where's the rest of the Samson family? They're not out here to back up Billy Jack. You actually, you bring up a very good point there, Ripper. A very good point. Uh, strength in numbers, and right now that definitely resides with the 450 boys. Chuck Samson, of course, taking the low road, resorting to dirty tactics. Several rakes to the face. Referee might want to watch that. And it was Billy Jack and Bruno Lee that brought out that fat tub of whatever it was last month to make fun of Jock Sampson. So, you better believe Jock is going to put a hurting on Billy Jack tonight. Oh, yeah, Jock definitely not happy about having fun poked at him last month, that is for sure. Although many, I think many of the UAW, uh, many of the war fans at the UAW Hall, though, found it quite funny last month. Right now, Chalk hammering away with some hard right fist, getting some revenge. Well, they went that. These fans don't know what's funny. They think Pauly Shore is funny. Hard into the corner. Shows you the strength there. Billy Jack picking up Chuck Sampson, who is not a small man. Body slams him down, going for the pin. One, two, and Chuck kicks out at the count of two rather easily. It, uh, Jock is a tough individual. I will give the devil his due. Oh, he's one of the toughest sons of bitches I've ever managed. I, I agree with you on that completely. It is going to take a lot more th than a uh, body slam to put away Jock Sampson. And then I mentioned he's my best friend. You didn't mention that, but it doesn't surprise me somehow. Jock now going to fly off the top. Took too long. Billy Jack caught him. Bear hug being applied now by Billy Jack onto Jock. Squeezing away, Jock trying to get out of it. Oh, wait a minute. 450 boys interfere. That's gonna put an end to this match rather quickly. The referee calls for the bell. Yeah, Billy Jack, name winner of the match. Does he feel like a winner right now? He might not. Further Lee's bringing a chair. There's no need for that. Well, as you mentioned, though, there are more uh, there are more 450 boys at ringside. Maybe the chair is a great equalizer. Still, it's no need. Why not? Just why don't the whole Samson's come out and even up the odds? No, they got to resort to bringing weapons. I think we're missing a couple of Samsons tonight. Maybe they're out doing some Christmas shopping. Maybe maybe buy, maybe buying some new overalls or something oh, like that. Yeah, Troy and uh, Thomas Jefferson here. They're probably making some moonshine for the. 
family get together. That sounds about right. <laughs> You're winning by disqualification here in match number one is Billy Jack Sampson. He might have won it by DQ, but a win is a win. Pretty good. And I don't think on the outside where Maynard wants to be. Kyle Cravenfield looks like he feels very comfortable on the outside of the ring. I would agree with that. They need to get back in the ring though before they get counted out. Well, that breaks the count, and the referee has to start counting all over again. However, that breaking of the count gives Maynard an opportunity. Well, that was short lived. And ouch. Right into the table at ringside where right. our timekeeper and ring announcer sit. You wanted them back in the ring, they're back in the ring. <laughs> well, the referee wanted them back in the ring. And uh, Craven trying to intimidate the referee. Craven looks like he's about twice the size of the referee. Oh, I bet he, he takes bigger dumps than the referee. <laughs> A jawbreaker, though, for Maynard, shines of life to, oh! to right there. Ran right into a thunderous clothesline from Craven. Maynard's neck, or not neck, excuse me, Maynard's head may be out there on I-75. He just about got decapitated. That's exactly right. Craven has been in control for most of this match. Ooh, wow. Now that 
That chop right there, ladies and gentlemen, might not have had the big slap sound that you're used to because of Maynard wearing a shirt. But I guarantee you, it hurt just as much. Oh, I bet it felt like getting hit by a frying pan. Cheap fire pain you buy at Walmart, a cast iron one like your grandma used to have. That's right. So not the Walmart variety, the Cracker Barrel variety is yeah, what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> I could go for some Cracker Barrel about now. Craven rolls Maynard back in the ring. And Maynard, I would think, needs to mount some offense here pretty soon. Craven going for a nonchalant pin. And Craven, I think, knew that Maynard was going to kick out. That was more to, would you say, uh, rub salt to the wound, so to speak? Just to show him. Just to show him. This is how bad I got you beaten now. A tremendous close, or close line, a tremendous forearm to the back. Maynard, though, as Craven maybe taking too much time. Maynard up to his feet, trying to fight back. Going to right there, Craven just throws him off. Now Craven using all of his weight to choke down across the throat of Jay Maynard. Yeah, when he doesn't pin like you were talking about, that, just total disrespect. He has no respect for Jay Maynard. Of course, I guess when you're the side of Craven, you probably don't have a lot of respect for a lot of people. Oh, good wow. Lord. Just tosses him around like he's a rag doll. It was a fantastic suplex. Now going for the pin, he could have him. But no, Maynard kicks out with inches to spare. I'm really surprised Maynard was able to kick out, but he did it somehow, and the wherewithal to raise that shoulder. Craven now has Maynard in the corner. Whips him to the far side. Craven ahead of steam, big running clothesline right across the chest of Maynard, driving even more wind out of his lungs. Maynard looking worse for wear as he gets whipped into the corner a second time, and here comes Craven for number two. Went to the well one too many times. Maynard out of the way. Maynard now. A clothesline staggers the big guy. Maynard He's still off. standing. He's still standing, Jimmy. No, that's exactly right. Ducks the clothesline, though. Look at that. Into a powerbomb. Maynard going for the pin. One, two. Where did Maynard, Jay Maynard, get that kind of strength? That's a very good question. Now, of course, Jay is not the smallest guy in the world, although he does pale in comparison to the size of Craven. Both men back up to their feet. Craven ducks the kick, or dodges the kick, I should say. Gets in a kick of his own. Now possibly a pump handle suplex coming up. Oh, wow. I just picked him up and threw it. Yeah, he did. This could be a one, two, three. That is it. Look out, everybody, on the roster for this guy. An impressive singles debut here at War Wrestling for Kyle Craven. As you mentioned, Ripper, he might be new to war, but he's no stranger to wrestling, and he definitely showed his dominance here in this match. Some confusion here. So uh, they're going to bring out his opponent. His opponent from Whitmore Lake, Michigan, Mikey. Mikey Smalls on his way to the ring. He is a scheduled opponent for the currently absent Mojo McQueen. I guess, in fact, hey, you mentioned, you mentioned Mojo could be under the ring. That's exactly where Mikey just looked. He looked under the ring to see if maybe Mojo was hiding under there. He's one creepy dude, man. Mojo is a very creepy guy. That's exactly right. Now, if Mojo can't answer the call, if he can't answer the bell, then I'm guessing Mikey Smalls will win by count out. At least that would be my assumption. The crowd here at the UAW Hall definitely behind Mikey Smalls, a huge fan favorite. Referee Joe Copez calls for the bell, is beginning the 10 count. If Mojo doesn't get out of here by the count of 10. That's referee, that's Jay Cortez, he's got a phone. He's got a phone and a mic. He says, from your house. You decided to just think of me. I can barely hear it, but that is... Unfortunately, you are not here to save your family, Mikey. And I'm at the doorstep. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs>
Mojo. Mo he said there's a video. Some about him. Mojo said he's not here. He's watching Mikey's family. That is creepy. That's that's borderline stalkerish right there. Mikey Smalls doesn't like what he sees. He shoves Jay Cortez down. Mikey Smalls is out of here. Like grease lightning, and I don't, I don't blame him. You know, I'm wearing this light. I'm going to look at the kid in Mikey's house right now. He's out there to come suck me and watch his family. Oh my God. Mikey Smalls has a wife. He's he has, he has a wife and two kids at home up in Michigan. He's making a video and he's going to post it on Facebook. That's what the local kids doing. So everybody can see him. That's crazy. This just went to a whole new level, Jimmy. Uh, I was just going to ask you, Ripper, now, you, you've not always been a fan of the rules, but this might be going a little bit too far. There, yeah, there's a line. That's weird. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we'll take a quick break while we try and sort ourselves out and figure out exactly what's going on here. All right, fans, wow. What a wild night already here during the intentions. Uh, we want to remind everybody that the AEW Special Pop Raffle that will be going on tonight. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have an intergender match, which made a lot of the guys here at ringside happy. As soon as they heard there's going to be ladies coming down to the ring, they got excited. Yeah, this is the closest some of these fans have ever been to a lady. Ladies and gentlemen, 
If you've never seen an intergender match before, it is a little different from a mixed, from a mixed tag in an intergender match. Only the guys can wrestle the guys, only the ladies or the gals can wrestle the ladies. I see, I see Cody has brought out one of his protégés, part of the, arm, the army. That's Shauna Reed. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, Shauna Reed was selling t-shirts for Cody Hawk at a war show. Grits and gravy at Thunder Kid, he dragged her from the table, put her in the ring, and insulted her until Jimmy and Cody come down to make the save. Well, that was a good thing of Jimmy and Cody to make the save. I mean, especially, you know, it's one thing if you attack another wrestler, you know, that, that's one thing. But to attack someone who's just work, work, working a merchandise table, that's a bit low. They took out the ref. They took out Jay Cortez. And Cody Hawk is suggesting that his student, who's been trained as a ref, rough this match. Well, the crowd seems to be into it. Well, Jay Cortez, who was assigned to be the official for this match, first he got shoved down by an irate Mikey Smalls. Then he gets attacked by Grits and Gravy, so he's helped to the back. And uh, looks like we're going to have a special guest referee here in uh, the newcomer, Shauna Reed, in the pink T-shirt. Now, I wonder, I mean, does she... Does she own a black and white zebra shirt, or is she just going to wear the pink t-shirt? She's probably just wearing a pink shirt. This is, you know, just thrown together. I don't think we've got time for her to go back and get a rough shirt. You might be right on that. Now, show, show must go on, Jimmy. That's true. The show must go on. Now, speaking of ladies, you were contrasting Thunder Kitty and Heather Owens, and you were talking about class. I just noticed on the back of uh, Heather Owens' gear, it says classy. So yeah. You, yeah, now, if you're classy, you don't need to tell everybody you're classy. Everybody knows you're classy. All right, so this should be an interesting match. First of all, because it's an intergender match. Now, because we have a rookie who's basically green as grass as the referee here. Although I will say, Shauna Reed is quite easy on the eyes. You can't dispute that. But anybody's better looking to look at than Jay Cortez. I'll give you that. Jay might have, he might have a uh, female fan or two, but that's neither here nor there now. A lock of John Murray backs Cody Hawk into the corner. Murray definitely is the bigger and the stronger. There's no question about that. As he gets distracted by the referee, he's put into a side headlock by the veteran Cody Hawk. Into the ropes, Murray using his massive size to his advantage. That's got to be like running into a mountain. I agree with you on that. Now, if Grits and Gravy and Thunder Kitty win this match tonight, where do you think they'll go to celebrate afterwards? I'm thinking Waffle House. Oh, yeah, they're definitely Waffle House people. Looks like she's ready to go. And I was under the impression that Heather Owens would have to tag in, but Cody is in the ring right now. Looks like. Now, okay, I got a question. Someone with a more traditional name, like a Heather Owens, we can call her Heather. Or we can call her Owens. For Thunder Kitty, do I call her, if I want to go by a first name or last name, do I call her Thunder or do I call her Kitty? I'm not sure. You should just call her Thunder Kitty or else she'll kick your ass, Jimmy. <laughs> she probably would. She is, Thunder Kitty is not one to take lightly. She is in the ring right now with Cody Hawk now, in the ring with Jimmy Shane as they trade out and Jimmy Shane applies the arm tw twist, the arm wrench. Shane, let's go with Thunder Kitty's arm, maybe having a second thought. Start gyrating, Jimmy. Nobody likes this. Jimmy Shane uh, 
I guess showing off his dance moves or something like that. Thunder Kitty looks ready to lock up. And as tough as Thunder Kitty is, Chippy Shane's a big guy. The uh, cat looks like she's ready to pounce. Really, Jimmy? See, it's, it's stuff like that's why he keeps dropping on my favorite wrestling list. Right now, he's sitting at 199. <laughs> That'd be the Ripper 500, right? Yeah, of course. Ripper, Ripper Blackheart 500. Jimmy Shane definitely has a height advantage over Thunder Kitty and, well, probably most of the people on the world roster. Jimmy was able to trick Thunder Kitty in, into doing some type of a disco dance there for a moment. And then it got obscene. <laughs> shame on you, Jimmy. No shame, Jimmy Shane, that's for sure. What's interesting, we still have not seen Thunder Kitty and Heather Owen in the ring at the same time. Hopefully we'll see that at some point in time. Bruce Gray now tags himself in. Shane calls for a timeout. And Jimmy starts gyrating again. Jimmy, I guess, uh, Jimmy Shane trying to show off that he has, uh, or prove that he has some rhythm or something. There we go. Jimmy points to Heather. The fans seem to want Heather to tag in. And Heather can hold her own against the guy. She has battled Jimmy. She has battled Grits and Grits. She's battled Tanu. That's right. And she has definitely held her own. Heather Owens. That's because she's a blonde devil. <laughs> she... I say this as a compliment, but Heather is one tough broad. She is not one lady to take lightly. As you mentioned, I mean, she can mix it up with the guys. Bruce Gray applies a uh, side headlock here. Is wrenching that in. Heather trying to get out, reverses into a side headlock of her own. Bruce Gray going over the ropes, which necessitates a rope break. The special referee there, Shauna Reed, she, she did a good job there, I thought. Yeah, no, I Dug the ropes, it was broken. Gritch and Gravy complaining to uh, Miss Shauna at the moment. I'm not sure why. I thought she was being uh, unbiased, at least in that situation. Bruce Gray letting everybody know that he is on the ropes. Gretchen Gravy seem to have at least a couple of fans here at the ringside. Cody Hawk in the ring now. Bruce Gray off the ropes and no. Gray puts on the brakes. The Indy icon, Cody Hawk. I have a very long history with that. Cody definitely a legend here in the state of Ohio and, and really the entire Midwest. Definitely has the experience fan advantage over Bruce Gray as these guys grapple back and forth for control. Gray right now applying a side headlock. But Bruce has the youth, the speed. I, if I have to pick a winner, I'm going with Bruce. Bruce gets scooped up. The referee just slammed him. Well, that's why he shouldn't run into the referee. One, two. But Bruce Gray kicks out. That was just about over in a heartbeat. Come on, how can this stand? Bruce Gray here seems a bit confused. Oh, she's high-fiving Heather Owens. Well, Heather being the veteran, she is just trying to be supportive. You know. I know everything's breaking down. It's becoming a Donnybrook, as they would say. You're right. It's becoming a melee. Donnie Brooks, he was a former Tri-State champion, wasn't he? <laughs> that sounds about right. All six individuals, all six persons in the ring right now. And, uh, and this is where Shauna being a new referee, just about everyone in there can take advantage of the fact that she's still a little green. She's trying to restore some order. It looks like she finally does. 
Bruce Gray and Jimmy Shane, I guess, are the legal man, legal men. Gray just tags John Murray, who gives a stop to the top of Shane's head. Murray now using all of his weight to choke. And this ref's a little too handsy with grits and gravy. Well, I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily by choice. Jimmy Shane gets choked twice in a row, first by John Murray, then as the referee was distracted, it looked like Thunder Kitty got involved on that. Jimmy Shane right now in a corner he does not want to be in. He's trying to fight his way out of it, but he does no good because Bruce Gray's right there waiting on him. That's right, Bruce Gray hammering, hammering away with his right fist. And Bruce Gray, to his credit, he does have some pretty lethal right fists. When you get hit by Bruce Gray, you know it. Oh, pound for pound, one of the best wrestlers working on the Indies right now. I won't dispute that at all. A knee lift since Jimmy Shane down. Jimmy might not know what night it is anymore. A tag, in comes Thunder Kitty. Leaping leg drop, catches Jimmy right across the throat. Going for the pin. Jimmy kicks out on one. I loved Jimmy when he was in Back to the Future, when he played Biff. What? Biff. He's that old? I, wait, he was in Back to the Future? Yeah, look at him. Does he not look like Biff? I'll let the fans at home be the judge of that. Uh, I'll say neutral and say no comment. Meanwhile, we have uh, Gray back in the ring now, hammering away at the top of Jimmy's head. Looks like he's picking him up, picking him up by the singlet. Shane's head, I mean, his bell's definitely been rung. I don't know if he knows what day it is anymore. Bruce Gray, though, takes too long on the neck breaker. That was out of pure desperation. I won't dispute that. Jimmy drops the elbow. Now he needs a tag desperately. I'm sure he has seen stars. Gray gets a tag. Shane gets attacked. In comes Heather Owens. Heather now trying to take on all three members. Like I get said, it's like running into a mountain when you run into John Murray. That's very true. A blind tag there from Cody Hawk. All three members are in the ring against Murray. A triple drop kick. The rest just standing there. Get her out of there. Get me an official world referee. This is total crap. Although it probably does take two members of that team equal the size of John Murray, so it kind of bounces out. And now she's caught between a cat fight between Thunder Kitty and Heather Owens while Cody and Jimmy have their way with John Murray. True Grant Bruce Gray still laid out outside the ring. Jimmy Shane now up to the middle turn, but it looks like he's gonna get an assist from his tag team partner, Cody Hawk. Are they gonna do a Frankensteiner here? Yeah, they do. A double Frankensteiner? I, I don't know. In comes Bruce Gray, drop kicks Jimmy Shane from behind. You know, I don't think he planned it, but you're pretty catchy there as you said a cat fight involving Thunder Kitty. Yes. The referee now is rolled back in. Oh man, that did not look fun at all. Count it, ref! John Murray, a big splash. And that's the ball game. Well, John Murray definitely did put a big hurt on Cody Hawk with that big splash right there. It knocked all the wind out of him. Cody unable to kick out. And Cody Hawk tried to get an unfair advantage, and it did not work out for him at all. Well, I don't think he was trying anything different than his opponents were doing. Nonetheless, Grits and Gravy and Thunder Kitty get the win. Well, whatever he's doing up there, I'm not sure that anyone appreciates it. And no, I don't think he's winning over too many fans with those dance moves. Well, you know,
Jimmy Sheen's the guy that's got the dance moves around here. Well, Jock Sampson, Jock Sampson was uh, filming all of Danny's dancing. Maybe Jock Sampson will uh, post that to Facebook or Twitter or, or something like that. Meanwhile, oh, wait a minute. Oh, the 450 boys were behind. From behind, it is the 450 boys. That's just uncalled for. They're attacking Bernal Lee Sampson from behind before the match could even start. Finally, referee Jay Cortez. Yeah, yeah, Cortez is out here breaking Security up. gets between them. Although one has to wonder if the damage has now been done. As uh, Danny Shea and Chuck Sampson had referee Joe Cope has distracted. It's a disgrace this close to Christmas. It is. The man's just trying to get a paycheck. Probably got family, wants to buy presents for him. Just a... And now he's trying to crawl into the ring before he gets counted out. The bell is wrong. Joe is up to a count of seven as Vernon Lee tries to crawl in the ring. Underneath that bottom rope, up to the count of nine. He's in there. So the match will continue, but Danny Shea pounces like a shark who smells blood in the water. He is on top of Vernal already. Vernal shoves him off, though. Vernal definitely has a size advantage. Yeah, but they cut that size advantage down when they jumped him. That's a good point. Oh, yeah, wow. Do it too. Yeah, a drop kick to the knee, that'll... Uh, no matter how big a guy is, that'll definitely uh, cut the size advantage down for sure. That'll catch you down. That's, yeah. It's like bringing the axe out. That's right. You know, back to something you said there earlier about smelling blood in the water. I'm pretty sure Danny Shea probably smells more like butter in the water. <laughs> looks like he's put on a few pounds this year. Yeah. Off the ropes. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, if you're keeping score at home, is called a leapfrog guillotine when you jump on oh. your opponent. Yeah. When their neck is across the rope. There you go. Yeah. Of course, Jock getting in a cheap shot there. As the referee was admonishing Shea, Jock Sampson gets involved from the outside. Sure is evident that Danny Shea is using the same training as uh, Jock Sampson at this point in his career. Yeah. Danny runs into the turnbuckle, but he gets a boot up. Bruno is still dazed, and if he wasn't dazed already, he definitely is now after that bulldog. One, two. Nice, nice second row bulldog executed there by Shea. Falls a little short on the pinfall. Yeah. That's right. Bruno Lee. Yeah, Bruno Lee able to kick out, I'm sure, after all the uh, beating, beating and the pounds to the head, which are now continuing. I'm sure he's seeing stars. I think he's barely standing at this point, almost out on his feet. No. Oh. Shea went to the well one too many times. Very Full nice. Nelson slam. Bruno trying to. Bruno trying to. WWE fans, that'd be a uh, bubble bomb. Yep, yep, that's right. Oh, shoulder tackle. Second one. Vernal with a, a head of steam for the first time in this match off the ropes. Oh, very nice. He dropped him hard there from high up in the air. That's probably close to 10 feet up in the air. Oh, wow. A double bell snap. That'll throw off the equilibrium. Sank like a rock to the bottom of the ocean on that one. Jock Sampson now getting involved again, distracting the referee, preventing a Just possible point. pinfall. There, there you go, that's what he needed. Some Sampson on Sampson violence there. Yeah. Vernal slugged him down. Although, it now allows Danny to get to the outside and break Vernal's momentum. The crowd here at ringside chanting 450 subs. Apparently they don't approve of those tactics. Vernal gonna try and suplex him in. Oh, wait, wait. Jock gets involved. Jock has him by the leg. The red three doesn't That's see. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Samson, Jock Samson just can't keep his nose out of other people's business, especially his family. Well, that was a dirty way for the 450 boys to win that match. You know what? What's sad about that, Jimmy, is the 450 boys are legitimately talented wrestlers that don't need to always take shortcuts. Tonight, December 3rd in Lima, Ohio, marks the night that I get my revenge. 
The dirty turned on me and that's fine, but just remember, I'm still just as dirty as anyone has ever been. I'm still the guy who's gonna cheat. I'm still the guy who's gonna spit in your face. I'm still the guy who's gonna rake your eyes. But now, I'm gonna be the guy to do it to you. You see, dirty, they wanna play all their little games, that's fine. But tonight, I help destroy what I help create. So tonight, the dirty Brandon Edwards, I hope you're ready. Cause there ain't gonna be a lot of respect for you tonight. But I promise you, I will be leaving as the champ. Christopher on his way to the ring now. Uh, Orlando recently kind of uh, saw the light, so to speak. He uh, was on the dark side for a while. He's changed his ways, and, uh, and Dexter, since changing his ways, he's become very popular with the fans here at War Wrestling. Well, he's always been a uh, respected wrestler. You know, very good high flyer. Been around a while, put some real work into to bulking up. He used to be pretty scrawny back in the day. Looks like he has something to say. Well, he might not get that chance to say something. I think he had some things on his mind. But Christopher now being interrupted by the music of the genetic jackpot, Joe Coleman. Dexter, uh, Joe just can't help but, but gloat about himself, basically. Well, I, I gotta be honest, throughout my career, I never had anything that looked like that to gloat about, you know? I don't know what he's got in that, uh, that bottle he's carrying around, but I went into the restroom when he was done, and it doesn't smell good. <laughs> Coleman coming to the ring with his protein powder, and you're right, though Joe Coleman might come off as cocky and uh, an egotistical, he definitely is a physical specimen to be reckoned with. He, uh, he takes care of his body, he takes great pride in his looks. He does, but uh, I'm sure a lot of the guys in the locker room just think he's a specimen. <laughs> is a former War Respect champion.
ladies and gentlemen. Whether they planned on wrestling each other or not, it's a, it's a match now. The bell has rung. It is going to be Orlando Christopher against Joe Coleman. Coleman has a size advantage. One would have to think that the speed advantage, though, would rely with Christopher. He's got to get some room to use that speed, though. Coleman's staying on him. Well, now he's gloating. And that might be Coleman's. Yeah, it might be Coleman's downfall. Giant hip toss there. Make it a pair of them. Coleman reeling. And there's the trifecta. Make it three. Nicely executed by Christopher. Christopher now. <laughs> Coleman is so dazed he can't even stand up for all 10 on the top. So Christopher gives him nine turnbuckle smashes, three on each turnbuckle, and then for number 10, just smashes his head face first into the mat. As, uh, as, Dexter, as Dexter said, Christopher now is in control, measures, and nails Coleman with a hard right hand. Was going to go for the Irish whip. Oh! But Coleman hangs him up. Across that top row. Top. Yep. Well, Coleman trying to throw uh, Christopher to the outside. Christopher holds on momentarily. Coleman stomps away at him. Well, oh, that's a painful looking move. Yeah. You say that again. Just can't stop moving. It's going to be his downfall. What's that old popper? Pride before the fall, right? I believe pride cometh before the fall. Coleman out choking Christopher across that middle rope, cutting off the uh, the air to the lungs. Coleman now doing some push-ups, showing off his strength and, super and superiority, all the while choking Orlando even more across that middle rope. And Dexter, I would say, if uh, if you were in the ring against a high flyer, what would be the best way to slow a high flyer down? Keep him on the mat. Keep him on the mat, keep him winded, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I typically just lay on top of him. <laughs> That's a good strategy, I won't argue that. The referee. Especially because I'm winded. <laughs> the referee admonished me uh, Coleman about using close fists. And, oh, yeah, Coleman using his size advantage here picks up Christopher with ease, snake size him. Right, snake size is that the plural past tense, I think. And then uh, clotheslines him down. Christopher right now is in a world of hurt. Coleman, though, gloating. Christopher back up to his feet. Nice executed drop. Beautiful drop kick there. There's one about Coleman and his gloating and, and his cockiness, but he, he definitely has the, the ability in the ring. That's right. He has the skill to back it up. That's right. If he could just uh, come off of himself a little bit, he could probably go a lot farther. That's a good call. Going for the suplex now. It was not pretty, but effective. None of the no, best no. going. Turned out more like a... Uh, oh. One, two... Right. Turned out a little more like a uh, brain buster there. I was just thinking that, yeah. Bucks. He couldn't quite get Christopher over, but you're right. It actually uh, might have, just as you called, Dex, it might have ended up worse for Christopher. Because instead of landing on his back, I think he landed right on the top of his head. Yeah. Boot laces across the eyes, though. Yeah. Now, this is a smart move by Coleman. Applying an abdominal stretch, I would think would uh, would win Orlando even more. No, absolutely, absolutely. But there he goes, right back to the documents. He can't. This guy's so full of himself. Now now he's gonna go to you know you can't just have the build and the good looks. You gotta go to cheating too. Coleman pulling on that top rope, applying even more pressure, stretching out that rib cage even more. Every time Coleman grabs that top rope. Rex with Evans, you can hear Orlando Christopher screaming out in pain. Finally, the referee is able to see Coleman cheating, kicks his hand off that top rope. He should, he should technically have him break the move here. They, the I agree, they should have to break it. Orlando trying to find out, finally does, gets a hit toss. Yeah, he, he paid for that though. The back, yeah, is, the back is definitely bothering him. 
Oh, look at this, look at this. Oh, one of his own. That's right, Christopher. <laughs> giving Coleman a taste of his own medicine. I like it. There you go. Use the whole count. <laughs> That's why there's a five count, Jimmy. That's right, there's a five count. That's right. A little taste of his own medicine there. Well, unfortunately for Christopher, though, I think he just got a to the face or a thumb to the eyes. Either way, he is at least temporarily blinded. Oh, Jay hey, look Cortez at that. is taking control. That's right. Jay Cortez might be a little bit short. Is that the same fellow that got thrown out of the ring by a girl earlier? Quite possibly. Maybe Cortez is trying to make up for it now. Yeah, I'm thinking probably. Trying to win back some of that respect he lost earlier on. Yeah. It was Thunder Kitty. I mean. Thunder Kitty is a tough lady, though. You got to yeah, give her that. She, she's scary. I'm not, I'm not afraid to tell you. I'm a little scared of her. Both guys charge at each other. That's right. Double clothesline. Both men go down in a heap. The referee now starting to administer the 10 count. There was a lot of momentum that came out of the corners with there. Yeah, it was. Christopher, yeah, Christopher trying to rally the crowd and rally himself, really. Yeah, yeah. Both of them already winded. That takes a lot out of you. Christopher blocking Coleman's punches. There's the speed you were talking about earlier. Just That's a little right. bit quicker. That's right, a lot quicker on that. That's a good call, Dexter. Coleman reeling in the corner. Co Christopher now. Mounts him, one, two, three. I think he's going to go all the way to 10. Well, nope, nope. Well, Coleman gets out of the predicament, but uh, that was, I think... That uh, was well scouted. I, well, I think Coleman was trying to drop Christopher across that top turnbuckle, but Christopher blocked it. Coleman didn't realize that. I think he realizes it now, though. I believe he's, uh, it's, it's, it's sinking in. Yeah. German suplex uh -oh. there. Hold on for a second. Yeah, he is. No, he's going all the way for the third. That's right, he's hanging on to that waist lock. He is going to go for number three here. And he gets it. Three German suplexes there. Very nicely done. By Orlando Christopher, as you said earlier on, Dexter, showing off his technical prowess. Yeah, back earlier in his career, he, uh, he wasn't quite as thick as he is now. I'm not sure he could have pulled that off. He's worked on his body a lot over the years. He still only put on some muscle, but right there he took too long. Telegraph this move, he might pay for it. Jumping, Coleman going for the pin. One, two, oh. Close to a three count. Wow, look at that. That's perseverance right there. Yeah, it is. By centimeters. Christopher is able to kick out Coleman now, going for some of that protein powder, which, as you mentioned earlier on, does tend to uh, smell up the bathroom. Yeah. Or wherever he's at. Yeah. And just as Coleman's. But he can't use that in the match. That would be a foreign object, and he's going to get disqualified Short if he does use it. Nice job, Jay Cortez. Good job by the referee, Cortez, Rolling. to grab that away. Coleman distracted here. Christopher from behind. Rolls him up. Oklahoma roll. One, two, three. That's it. Hey, Christopher gets the three counts. Just as we said earlier, Coleman just can't pay attention to the match. Coleman, yeah, as you said, easily sidetracked. Too caught up on himself. Absolutely. Cost him a pinfall there. Not going to get to the pay window. <laughs> That's exactly right. He's not going to make near as much no, money tonight. No, no. But from behind, that's Brandon Edwards. Oh, well, there's your former broadcast partner out here. That's right. I'm glad you're here with me, though. I like you a bunch better than I like him. Well, I appreciate that. They throw Christopher back into the ring. And Brandon Edwards, who returned just a couple months ago at Blood, Sweat, and Fears. Ladies and gentlemen, this is now. The War Spectacular Match, Brandon Edwards defending against Orlando Christopher. Of course, Brandon Edwards, if you're new to World Wrestling, he is a veteran. He, he did serve in the military. I would yeah, think a lot of respect for Brandon Edwards, but not, not a lot of respect in his choices of late. Yeah, ever since coming back, he hasn't quite been the same Brandon that he used to be, has he? No, no, no. Well, anytime you align yourself, I can speak personally. Anytime you align yourself with River Blackheart, your way of thinking definitely changes. 
It, yeah, it can definitely get twisted by that guy, that's for sure. I yeah, would hopefully, think... Uh, uh, hopefully Brandon will come around in his well of thinking the way I did. Get away from that guy. It would be nice. I don't know if it's going to happen by the end of this match, though. Well, I would say no. I, I would think that um, Oz would definitely be in Brandon Edwards' favor, though, seeing how Christopher just wrestled a match, and now he's having to wrestle two in a row. Well, and he jumped in from behind as well. So this match is pretty one-sided one at this point. Yeah, although this match is on the outside of the ring right now, which actually would favor a little bit of the hardcore fighting style of Orlando Christopher. It looks like Christopher's uh, back on top over there. The fans are standing here at the UAW Hall. Kind of hard for us to see what's going on from our broadcast position. As ladies and gentlemen, this match is for the War Wrestling Respect title. Christopher's back in the ring now. Here comes Edwards. Edwards going for the pin. pin. Yeah, one, two, only a one count. No, that was cross facing him. That endurance you're talking about for Christopher earlier on, I think, helped him kick out there. Yeah, I'm not sure how much endurance he has left after a full match with Coleman and, and being jumped behind by Edwards. Edwards is not afraid to take uh, the low road for sure. Claws and rakes. Now choking away, or he was choking away now as he distracts the referee, griping about the fans at ringside. I think Ripper Blackheart getting some cheap shots. And right now, Orlando Christopher is in a world of hurt. Brandon Edwards now applying a sleeper hold. Now, Dexter, you've been in the ring. You've uh, probably had a sleeper or two applied to you. What's it do to you? Well, it definitely cuts down your air supply, which you know is uh, very important in the ring. I had an advantage of having double and triple chins, so it was harder to get underneath there. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that up. Christopher, Christopher trying to fight out. Although he gets a belly to back suplex for his effort. One, two. Hey, another kick out there. I'm really I'll surprised. The kid, uh, he's, he's earning respect tonight. Already going through a full match with Joe Coleman and, and still holding his own here. Brandon Edwards. He's watching himself. There's Ripper getting involved again. A lot of the fans at ringside do not like this new Brandon Edwards. A lot of them boo Brandon Edwards. A lot of them jeer Brandon Edwards. Brandon Edwards signed the referee. Well, he doesn't really appreciate that. Not that the referee can do anything about it. Hard into the corner goes Christopher. Running uppercut from Edwards, now bounces off the ropes. Oh, single leg drop kick to the side of the head. Since Christopher down, he might have knocked Christopher into next week. That was very well executed. Going for the pin. Edwards has his foot on the ropes. Good call by the referee to catch that. Well, there's that line of thinking I was talking about. With, uh, with Ripper Blackheart, it's, there's nothing that is a shortcut to them. Nothing you won't do to win a match. Christopher trying to crawl away from Edwards to try and get a break here. Edwards are just being relentless. Look for the pin. One, two. Christopher again able to kick out, but that might, might have just been instinct. Yeah, I, I was going to say he's going on instinct right now. This is just his years of experience. He keeps fighting back. One thing I'll say about Edwards that we didn't see with Coleman is he is staying on him. He's not giving a... He's not giving Christopher a break. When he's, uh, when he's off, I think one of the other members of the team is on him. That's right, it's definitely a numbers game. Uh, the disadvantage going to Christopher, as he's basically trying to wrestle two or three guys right now. Christopher ahead of scene there for a moment. He might have celebrated a bit too much, though, Dexter. Yeah, definitely. Got a leg Larry in the mouth. Win the match, is... win the match, then celebrate, right? Yes, absolutely. Edwards looks like he's going to the top here. I've, uh, I've had a couple of matches with Edwards over the years. Yeah, he took too long as well. Christopher meets him with an uppercut. Stops Edwards' progress. Christopher now going up top. Maybe looking definitely for a high risk or maybe a superplex off top. Dangerous territory for both men. The entire ring shakes. Crowd 
appreciated that effort. Yeah, they did. That superplex definitely took it out of both men, although it probably took it out of Edwards worse as yeah. his, his spine rattles on impact. Any move off the top will uh, take it out of both men. Looks like Christopher might make it to his feet first here. Christopher Day's in the corner. He, maybe not. He suckers. Look at that. He oh, suckered it in. Yep. Yeah. Going for the three peat on the German suplexes. It helped him beat Coleman earlier on. Edwards, though, back elbows, make it two of them. Oh, wow. Beautiful toss there by Christopher. Beautiful suplex. Tell you what, just when this kid seems like he's down, he sure got a lot of fight left in him. Until right there, Edwards drives Christopher into the turnbuckles, smashing his back against those turnbuckles, delivers a few shoulder butts, but Christopher's still trying to battle back, which is impressive. Oh, oh tornado DDT off the top. This could be it for the title. One, two, three, no. Oh, Edwards gets no. a hand on the bottom row. Wow. That was a veteran move there in its love. Yes, it was. Christopher almost had one there. Yeah. I think this place would have erupted had he did win it, but no, the match continues. Now a boot to the midsection by Edwards. Both guys jockeying for position, back and forth, back and forth. Fisherman oh. suplex. Actually, he dropped him right on top of his head. He sure did. He drove him down. The One, two. Oh, wow. And again, Christopher proving that he still has a little bit left in the tank. Somehow, amazingly, kicks out. Edwards feeling froggy. Going to go back up top. Taking a lot of time again. Paid for it the last time he took this much time. You're exactly right. Oh, he did again. No, wait, Christopher caught him. He reverses. Christopher applying a sharpshooter. Christopher with a sharpshooter. Edwards tapping, but the referee doesn't see it as the referee is distracted by Ripper Blackheart. I think Christopher just had this match won, but the referee didn't see it. I believe that was more of a cloak relief than a it might have been a just a relief. Now wait a minute. Another member of the Dirty is up on the edge of the ring. There we go. There's the numbers game being a downfall. Oh, oh Orlando Christopher with a foreign object, but the referee does not see it. One, two, three, that's it. I didn't see that's anything. It. I didn't see anything, Jimmy. I think it was just a nice, nice shot to the head. That's called karma. champion Brandon Edwards we have a new respect champion Orlando Christopher showing exactly what he is made of tonight you know that was a really competitive match it'd be nice to see Edwards get back to his old ways he doesn't need all that extra garbage I'm not saying I saw anything in Christopher's hand or not but I'm pretty sure someone else brought that out here well, like you said, that's good karma right there. Orlando Christopher getting some revenge and getting the title. Tonight is the night. December 3rd in Lima, Ohio. Tag Team Gauntlet, Bad Company. We're back, we're bad. I think we're pretty pissed off. You see, October we got our asses handed to us. We'll, we'll talk that one up. We're big, we're bad. We can admit we got our asses kicked. But you know what happens when you get your ass kicked? You piss off a silverback and you make a tank come full steam ahead. Ripper, we got a feeling you're up to something. Remember that bounty that he had on my head? Yeah. yeah I, I think this bounty has continued. So Tanu and 
whoever the hell you got with you, Pop Papa Dingo or whatever. The Dingo Warrior. The Dingo. Uh, no, he ain't that good. Oh, he's not that good. But Ripper, your two boys can't keep bad company down. Tonight, December 3rd, the UAW Hall, December, we take back what we've been missing for a long time. The other part, not your dumbass, the tag team titles for the longest reigning war tag team champions. It's coming back home for two times. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as our uh, Hall of Fame ring announcer, Slick Rick Toms, just explained to our uh, live audience here at the UAW Hall a few moments ago, this is going to be a gauntlet match, and the winning tag team of the gauntlet will become the number one contenders for the War Wrestling Tag Team Championship. And up first, we have the team of Super Future, which is comprised of Xavier Walker and Palmer Cruz. And they're taking on the soul, sh the soul shooters, and uh, it's it, like a be, it's, it's like a before and after picture up there right now. Well, what I was going to say, uh, I was kind of thinking, kind of a uh, interesting contrast as we might have uh, youth and experience versus age and treachery here. Absolutely, it's it's like looking at Drew and Apollo when they first got here years ago. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, not me. <laughs> Well, Drew was never that skinny. Drew Skill's definitely a massive individual. He's, well, never mind. All four guys are in the ring right now. They're all going at it. It is Drew and Xavier. Meanwhile, it's Apollo and Palmer. From oh, big headbutt by Apollo. It's like the Soul Scooters are getting on top here. It does look that way right now. Step over toe hole, head butt. Followed up by a head butt to the rib cage, look like. That's right. It's like another double team move coming for uh, Palmer. Walker is on the outside trying to collect himself. Cruz hard uh, into the corner. This here is going to be bad. Oh, wow. Big running boot, making two of them. They just about took his head off. Palmer Cruz might be... the experience you were talking about. Yeah. Palmer Cruz might be wishing he was back home right now or something. Man, Walker's it... trying to even the odds on the outside. He pulled yeah, Apollo yeah. off the apron. Yep. You're exactly right. And it... Oh, wow. Jeez. That was a big European uppercut on the outside. I don't know if you were watching that or Drew and Palmer, but... And actions all over the place here. You're, you're exactly right. Now, I was, I was watching in the ring. Yeah, I saw the big clothesline. But yeah, you're right. Also, a big uppercut on the outside. And you're, you're right, Dexter. This action is all over the place. Security having a hard time uh, keeping uh, keeping track of what's going on. Well, I'll tell you what. Security is best just to kind of stay out of the way here. And stand back and watch. Not get involved. If you touch one of these guys, they're just going to react. Yeah. Security's just stay between them and the crowd. Well, it's now Apollo Star and Xavier Walker. Meanwhile, Drew Skills has Bryant or has uh, Palmer Cruz up. Cruz, though. Oh, Skills into the ring post. Yeah. Nice. That was a pretty veteran move out of this young guy. Neither the referee Joe Coker is, yeah, he was counting. Palmer Cruz slid back in just before the 10 count. Well, that was completely unexpected. I don't even know what to say here, Jimmy. From where these guys came from, I don't know how they become fan favorites. That's just how much Jock Sampson hated. <laughs> well, Super Future tried getting a jump on the Sampsons and that didn't work. Earlier on, I was wondering <laughs> where... <laughs> I'd like to say that was ring intelligence by the Sampsons, but that may be overstepping. Nice neck breaker, though. 
Earlier on, remember Blackheart and I were wondering where these two members of the Sampsons were. We were thinking maybe they were out doing some Christmas shopping or something, but they've made it here now. See, what they lack in intelligence, they definitely make up for just pure reading in instincts. I agree with that, yeah, natural uh, instincts. Some people have it, some people don't. These guys have it, that's for sure. I think down there in Appalachia where they come from, they just fight for food. <laughs> well, down there, I don't, I don't think they have very much cable, so they probably just do a lot of fighting for entertainment in general. So, you know. I would say so. Uh-oh, he caught him. Oh, wow. That was impressive. He plants him. The big man, Xavier Walker, showing that he has some strength as well. He's not going to drag over. Tags in Palmer Cruz. The smaller, more agile of the two. Body slam. Here comes Cruz off the ropes. Thrown up into the air for extra height on that big splash. Now going for the pin. One, two. Sampson right now is getting double teamed like you would not believe. An avalanche splash there from Cruz. Irish whipped into a bad kill by Brian Walker. This is, wait, they're going for a pin here, one, two. Well, I'll tell you what, this, uh, this young team of the Super Future, they're, uh, they may be new to world wrestling, but they're not new to this crowd. No, that's for sure. Right now, some pretty veteran moves from Super Future. Doing a great job here of double teaming Coy Sampson. Little, yeah, they're very cohesive. They are. A little dance move. Flying elbow drop. Coy able to kick out at the count of two. Pretty sure the fans will be impressed that Dexter knows the word cohesive. <laughs> I'm impressed, that's for sure. Money word of the night right there. Rear chin lock now being applied by Cruz. I learned cohesive from things like peanut butter and jelly, macaroni and cheese. Those are cohesive. Those are. Too much peanut butter in your mouth, you won't be able to open your mouth anymore, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Then it becomes adhesive. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right now, Coy Sampson getting choked on the ropes by Walker. The referee warning Walker, which now allows Coy to get choked even more by Cruz. See, there again, this, this young team, is they're very, very good in the ring. Why do they need to resort to the short cuts? Just let your ability in the ring speak for it. Big elbow drop. This could be it. Samson is able to kick out. And um, right now, Coy Samson is being uh, Right now, Coy Sampson is being rag tagged. He's trying to fight out. Coy's fighting back like he's at a family reunion. <laughs> and he was doing pretty good until right there, until he got a knee into the midsection. And that'll stop your progress in a heartbeat. Knocked all the wind out of Coy now. They were going for a double suplex, but they lose track of him. He's able to make the tag. And this is what the Sampsons needed. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, this is a gauntlet style tag match. The winning team moves on, the losing team. This is single elimination. It is not round robin. Oh, that was oh, impressive. Wow. Drop kick to the side of the head. One, Into two. a sidewalk slam. That's an impressive move. That's right. And it, I am not sure, Jimmy, but I'm pretty sure I saw a do -si do in there. do -si do and around we go. I like it. I like it. That's fitting for the Samson. That's right. Super Future put up a heck of a fight, but they are now out. The Samsons will move on into this gauntlet tournament that we're doing. I don't know about Super Future, but it looks to me like they have a bright future around here. You're so punny. <laughs> well, you know, I spent 17 years with other people talking for me. I've had a lot of buildup. Finally getting it all out, right? That's right. Finally let me have a mic. Billy from Jersey tonight, it looks like. The Scarboni boys, yeah, on their way to the ring without their manager. We'll have to see how well they function 
without Vinny from Jersey being here. Definitely the brains of this outfit. I have a feeling, I heard a rumor that Vinny was out of brokering. <laughs> That's entirely possible. Of course, the Scarbonis, they've been in the business for quite a while. They're definitely not herpes. No, no, I faced the Scarbonis on a number of occasions myself. They are, you know, this tag team division here in World Wrestling is loaded with talent. They're just more and more like the super future here, you know. This, this tag team division, it's, it's hard to uh, stay on top of. Looks like some square dancing there. It's a close line. Ooh, wow, running shoulder block. The shoulder butt, I should say, yeah, which has. Oh, wow. They pancaked him and a close line from behind. They are what you would call unorthodox. Oh, wow. Corey Sampson just helps. One of the Scarabonis right out of the ring. Over the top rope, almost onto our ringside cameraman. That was scary. So yeah, that was Sonny who got thrown out hard to the uh, floor here. Meanwhile, Vinny gets a back elbow from Coy. Boy, seeing Sonny fly like that, it was like the uh, the sun going down in a hurry. Yeah. Although there's right a tear. across the horizon there, Jimmy. Uh-huh. Sonny now up to the top rope. Went for a double axe handle, but he telegraphs it. Scarboni's not looking good so far. Face first, right into a boot. Thomas Jefferson and Corey now double teaming. These guys are, I'll tell you what, we were talking about the cohesiveness of the super future. The Samsons have their own kind of cohesiveness. In there. One, two, that counts. Vinny breaks up the yeah. pinfall. Broken up by Vinny. And you know, nothing wrong with that. That's what you do as a tag team. That's what the other guy's there for. Yeah, that's right. Jawbreaker by Sonny to get the tag. Now they're taking advantage of Thomas Jefferson. If I was wanting to find a good Italian restaurant here in Lima, do you think the Scarbonis would know where to go? Probably send you over to Fazoli's. Thomas Jefferson right now in the ring, and uh, he's had his bell rung now after a double teaming by the Scarbonis. That's Vinny in the ring right now with Thomas Jefferson. Thomas trying to fight back. The forearm to the back stops his progress. A nice double team, but they kept it under five seconds. Yep, perfectly legal. I tell you what, I spent a lot of years in the tag team division here with my partner, Stamp Lickage, and I've never been in a match like this. This, I'm pretty sure I'd want to be the last team in in this. Yeah. I mean, of course, we would have been because we uh, were undefeated war wrestling champions. Never lost the belts. There we go. Well, Vinny Scarboni in the ring now, and he's not looking happy. Oh, he got one of those sidewalk slams slash drop kicks to the side of the head. And, and that does a number really on your, your whole body, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It stuns you right away first. Then you probably knocks the wind out of you a little bit with the sidewalk slam. Thomas Jefferson's a big man coming down on top of you. It's a good call. Oh, I, I see, these guys are impressing me tonight. Well, he has oh. Sonny. Got a wreck to the eyes. Throws him into Coy. One, two, three. That's it. The Scarbonis win. Scarbonis pick up the win. Crazy Coy Simpson and TJ Simpson have been eliminated. This is nonstop action, Jimmy. Yeah, it is. It's hard to keep keep up with it. It's so fast paced. The Scarbonis, they might have stole one there, but they get the win nonetheless. A to the ring by Hooks. For the shores of Madagascar, Car, Tony And from Scott Island, the Beast. Well, this is going to get interesting real quick. As the fans don't really like. It's just that easy. It is just that easy. Did we miss something? Yeah. Yeah, they just won. The Scarboni is distracted by the Samsons who had not left ringside. Now other 450 boys are coming out 
and attack into Sampson's. Here Danny comes more Sampson's. That big one. There's almost too much action to call here. Action breaking out all over the place as this action is starting to go back into the locker room area as the 450 boys and the Samsons all battling one another. Well, I'm telling you, I'm glad they're taking that to the back, Jimmy. The, the bad blood between the Samsons and the 450 boys is dangerous, dangerous around the crowd. All right. Because they just want to get at each other so bad. Taking this place over. Who's next? Come on. Who do you got for us? Bring him out. Come on. Well, I, I understand the beast moniker now. issues an open challenge. He might regret that here in a few moments. Bad company. The ring is about to get a bad, bad taste. It's going to be a lot of flesh in there, Jimmy. Yeah. I've been in the ring with these guys, too. Bad Company finally making their way down to the ring. Bad Company, of course, made up the veteran Sherman Tank, Chris Hall, but the Beast and Tanu were waiting on them. In fact, look at Tanu raining down headbutts on the top of Hall's head. Uh-oh, Hall looks like, yeah, no one home. Maybe a good thing for Hall. Those headbutts had almost no effect. He's fighting back against Tanu. Beast and Tank fighting each other. Beast is severely outsized by Tank. Which is surprising because Beast is a pretty big guy himself. Now that, there's, there's the drop kick to the low extremities. Oh, wow. Yeah. A gigantic splash from Tanu onto Tank. Now Tanu with all three or 400 pounds standing on. Oh, wow. I would say that there's been very few times that the Beast has been the the tiny guy in the ring. Yeah, you're exactly right. Looks like he's got to be a good 260, 270 himself. Yeah. And he is 100 pounds lighter than anybody else in there. The referee trying to restore order. Uh, I I do not envy. Oh, geez. There's a second one. This might be it. One, two. Wow. Somehow Sherman kicked out. I'm really surprised at that. After, after two big splashes from Tanu. Sherman trying to get over to his corner to make a tag. Tanu puts a stop to that. Just goes back to that ring instinct. These guys have been around a long time. You know, someone should really tell Beast to take his shirt off. <laughs> well, it's his Christmas sweater. Oh, that's, that's not a Christmas sweater. I like it. I like it. Tis the season. It is. That's right. Both of us wearing our Christmas sweaters tonight. Absolutely. So we, absolutely. we should have someone take a picture of us together. It could be a Christmas card photo. You and I in our ugly sweaters. I'm for that. Meanwhile, because I'll be in the picture. That's right. Meanwhile, back in the ring. You yeah, normally I have charged for a picture with the Hall of Famer. That, that's true. See, I'm not used to that. Not being a Hall of Famer, I don't know what it is, you know, to, to be able to ask for money. Oh, uh, I really like that idea. <laughs> back, back to the action tank now, back up to his feet, makes a tag to Chris Hall. Hall coming in now. Oh, wow. A massive clothesline by Hall. Yeah, he still didn't take Tanu off his feet. Which is amazing. I mean, you can hear that clothesline all the way across well, the AEW Hall. You got a man with a full, steam, a full head of steam, weighing in at about Ooh. 350 and barely budged Tanu. Yeah. The double axe handle took care of Beast, though. Yes, it did. Beast goes to the outside, now it's back to Hall and Tenu again. Hall has Tenu in the corner, working over his bread basket, trying to drive the wind out of him. I don't envy the maintenance crew after this. No. As you mentioned, all four of these individuals are rather large, so I'm hoping the ring has extra supports underneath. No. Tenu makes the tag to the Beast. Hall takes over on him right away, though. Finally! Off his feet. That's right. 
Beast off the top, he gets caught wow. by Hall. Now that's impressive with Hall's strength. Yeah, it is. That's a big man to catch mid. He hoists him up in a fireman's carry. Drops him down to the mat. That's an impressive maneuver. Two, three, that's it. That's an impressive maneuver. I've been in singles action against Hall as well. That's a strong man. Yes, it is, Mr. Hooks. Mr. Hooks' tag team just got defeated. I guess that's what he gets for uh, calling out the next available tag team. I guess so. Bad company moves on. They get the win. So now I'm wondering, is, I've lost count. Does this make bad company the number one contenders? I believe it does. I believe it does, Jimmy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we shall determine. Here it is. Who are the world tag team champions? It's somebody coming to ringside. Yeah, someone in a uh, sweatshirt and hoodie. I can't tell who that is. He's got a baseball bat. What's security doing? They need to do something here. He's got a Louisville slugger. I'm not sure who that is. I can't tell from here. He's in the last person I, last time I saw somebody stalking around wrestling rings with a baseball bat, it was Sting. You think Sting's here? Uh, wow, the And there's Ripper walking around like he did something there in those belts. I don't think this match has officially started yet. At least I don't think. I didn't hear the bell ring. Well, hey, here's a tank and Idris Abraham right here in front of us. Yeah, that's right. We need to be careful. Hopefully this action does not come our way. It's starting to. That is some impressive hair that young man has. It is. If no, this, not tank. Right. If this action does come our way, I want you to protect me. Well, I'm retired, so, <laughs> you know. Idris Abraham's got as much hair on his head as the beast does on his body. Both of which have more hair than Sherman Tank has. Idris Abraham goes hard into the chairs over near us. The there goes the uh, Ripper just exited the building. I, yeah, maybe the guy with the hoodie doesn't have his hood on anymore. Yeah, Ripper Blackheart running for his life. Wait a minute, that's by my eyes to see me. That's Tom. That's Big Tom. That's Tom Williams, the owner of war. Earlier on tonight, he was arrested by police officers by deputies from the Allen County Sheriff's Department. I guess uh, I guess Tom knows people in high places. He is out of the Hooskow, and he is back here at the UAW Hall, and he is here to help and maybe I gotta, the I gotta confess that, uh, you know, I was a little late getting here. Wasn't, uh, wasn't necessarily supposed to be here, but I got a phone call from the uh, Allen County Sheriff's Department, or from the, from the county jail, uh, it was my family member, you know, Big Tom, and to be a Hall of Famer has some advantage. I get a little extra cash laying around, and they didn't have anything to do, so I picked Tom up and I brought him right back here. There we go. We spent many years together up and down the roads around here, and taking towns and taking names, right? Absolutely, taking buffets. <laughs> Tom's not so much into that anymore. I was little Tom for many years around here. Yeah, he's kind of ruined that for me. The fans, the fans are standing here at the UAW Hall. This action is all over the place. It's kind of hard for us to see. All four men are back to the ring now. Andrew Abraham and uh, Chris Hall are in the ring. There's a tag from Abraham to his partner, Austin Mannix. Fans uh, start to, uh, you know, there for a moment, Dexter, there was about 500 available seats here in the hall. Yeah, there was, they were standing. Feet. Yeah, no doubt about it. Between five and six easily. But being the polite fans that the World Wrestling fans are, they parted the way so we could see the ring. That's right. Now, Parting of the seats. The dirty working over the hall. There's a reason they've been tag team champs for a while here. You're exactly right, Dexter. They, they take shortcuts and they, they have Ripper in their 
your corner, but the, you have to be a legitimately talented to hold these bets. Yeah. You're exactly right. Chris Hall trying to fight out of this predicament. But continues to get double team. Maddox fist to the head. Abraham now a running forearm. Really rocks the skull. Oh, jeez. Running into Geary. That might have knocked Hall out. This could be it. One, two. And Tank remember, breaks up the pinfall. He, yeah, Tank did break up the pinfall. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, this is for the War Wrestling Tag Team Championship. The belts are on the line. Bad Company would love desperately to try and take the belts from the Dirty. You know, there's times that I've uh, talked to Stamp over the years about uh, trying to get back together and make another run at these tag team belts. And then I see matches like this, and I'm like, Jimmy, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, kind of glad he retired. Kind of glad I'm sitting behind this mic tonight. Yeah. Austin Mannix hammering away on the side of Chris Hall's head. Austin off the ropes. Hall was able to catch him, though, delivers a spine buster. This could be the opening he needed. Now he desperately needs to get over there and make the tag to Tank. If he could just roll over, he could reach him. As you know, though, sometimes that's easier said than done. Right, he's taking a beating here, and yeah. those are big men. Looks like Mannix might make the tag. Oh, he makes the tag to Hall. That's right. In comes Sherman Tank. Down goes Mannix. Mannix was not able to tag in Abraham. Off the ropes. He was going to try back body drop. But Mannix is able to get out of it and deliver a kick to the side of the head. All four men back in the ring as Mannix tags Abraham. Oh, wow. Double Mannix there the showing, the yeah. Mannix there is showing he has some martial arts skill. Nice sidekick, Hall, to the outside of the ring. Sherman there. in the face of uh, Big Tom. That's something he's not really going to want to do. Oh, Big Tom delivers a big hand. Yeah, he did. A big right hand. Abraham goes down. Dirty Tom cleaning house. That's a big call. Ripper Blackheart nowhere around. When we saw Ripper running from ringside earlier on, I think he was running from Tom. I believe you're right. Two, three. New champs. New champs. Indeed, new champions here in World Wrestling. I'll tell you what, I spent the better part of uh, 20, 22 years with Tom. Never seen him move so fast. Except for when Christine's chasing him. <laughs> Bad Company, I believe, are your new tag team champions. Wait a minute, they have... There's something going on on the far side of the UAW Hall. I believe they have Tom's wife, Christine. Tom Williams' wife, Dexter, uh, Dexter Dementia, is going to go over and check and see what's going on. Tom Williams' his wife helps run concessions uh, and is in charge of a lot of the merchandise. The Dirty leaving ringside, no longer tag team champions, but right now, who has the belts is not really what's important. The crowd giving the business to the dirty. Austin Maddox giving it right back. Chaos is reigning here at Dirty Intentions. Tom, Tom was able to uh, save or retrieve his wife from hooks, however you want to word that. Yeah, I, uh, I went to try to help the family, and uh, the time I got over there, they had Christine back in the building, so they obviously got her away. 
very, very weird uh, circumstance. Tough to call. Sorry, I left you hanging there, Jimmy. No, you're fine. I'm, I'm glad you went over to observe. I couldn't see it from here, so I'm glad. Uh, well, I went over to do more than observe. Yeah. I still got a little left in me. Well, regardless of how things went down there, we'd have new tag team champs. That's right. Hard guys. Holy shit. <laughs> he hasn't ran that fast in a long time. <laughs> no, no, he hasn't. Running was not part of his vocabulary for many years. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Listen, I want to tell you guys, I want to apologize for my actions. But as God is my witness right now, ain't nobody ever going to put their damn hands on my wife. I signed the paperwork tonight. I no longer own this company. Did Tom just say he's giving up ownership? The fucking truth. Now, stick to my language, but I'll tell people this. I spent 20 years in this business building a company with my blood, my sweat, my tears of all your guys' facts. Hard to understand what he's saying. He's very emotional. He's always wore his emotions on his sleeve. I don't need no thank you guys. I don't need them. Because I'm telling you guys this right now. This shit is personal now. See, the big difference is, since I don't own this company no more, I'm an employee. And that's you said, you said term loosely, Mr. Hooks, you asshole son of a bitch. From this day forward, I'm gonna manage these guys. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I make a damn promise that I'm willing to die for this company. This is me at 280 pounds, five pounds from my goal weight when I was in high school 25 years ago. Okay? Now, everybody in the back thinks I'm an asshole. Well, guess what? I'm an asshole now because you messed with my wife. So, whoops, Tanu, Beast, if I find you in the parking lot, if I find you at your job, I'm going to let beat you, hunt you down and beat your ass. Oh, I got your back, Penny. I got your back, okay? Now, let's call a spade and spade here. I know who's behind all of this. I know who's behind all of this. Ripper Blackheart, I know you're behind all of this. And as God is my witness right now, it's going to come to a head, me versus you. Yeah. Matter of fact, did I make a promise that I was going to shave Ripper's head? Yeah. That's what I'm telling you, man. When you're in a gang fight, when you're in a gang war, the only people that are gonna win are the ones who ain't afraid to go all the way. You look at Danny Shea, he ain't never been afraid of nothing, man. When you look in the eyes of Sonny Scarboni, you're looking in the eyes of somebody who ain't afraid to kill you. He'll pull the gun out and put you down. And when you look at the hate in the face of Jock Sampson, when you see that hate, you know you're messing with the wrong game. Tell him, baby, that's right. Sampson's is enough. Usually the 450 boys is all about whiskey and women, but after tonight, no, man. no, this has gone far enough. Mm -mm. Samson's, you got two weeks, and then you better quit the business. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, every time we come to Lyme, I just want to do one thing. 
fall right. out. Right. And tonight, That's for right. the second time, I whoop Vernal Lee's ass. So he's going to be on Facebook all night crying about how I whooped that ass, boy. But I'll tell you what, I'm getting tired of you sons of bitches spoiling my party time. I'm here to ball out, and you keep interfering. I'll tell you what, if it keeps up, I might have to pull out the big gun here at the next time we're out here, boy. <laughs> yeah, you know so, what I'm saying? So, yeah, right. yeah. Oh, the thing that we need to make perfectly clear right now, I'm not going to cuss and swear. I'm not going to scream or yell. I want rid of my family. I want them out of here. I don't care what happens to them, but I do not want them here. We don't want them here. No, 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 this no, no, place no, no, no. is not big enough for all of us. The most dominant faction, the most dominant four men in the history of war wrestling. This is what we make. This is money. This is money. We are the greatest thing coming today. And if you're not lucky, you're just going to miss the greatness. Why, why, why is it never a fair fight with Jock Sampson? Why are the 450 boys always coming from the crowd, coming from behind? Why, Jock Sampson, can't you stand up to me face to face? Why can't it ever be a fair fight? What? No, no, no. See, I don't get it. I don't get it. We make change out of they $5 ass every night we here. Every night we every here. Night. All right? Tag team titles on the line. What they got to do? They cheat us out of it. We could have won those. We could have gone right. ours. Mm. Absolutely. Danny Shea, you talk about whipping my ass. You talk about whipping my ass. The only reason why you whip my ass is because you're always jumping me from behind. You want to talk about balling out, son? Next time I see you, I'm taking you out. Hold on, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Jock Sampson said something like, he didn't think war wrestling was big enough for all of us. And you know what? Something's got to give. I think he's yeah. right. Oh yeah, come on. Jake something, you've been war champion for 450 days. Tonight I'm gonna make this really short and sweet and simple for you. Two out of three falls, you're walking in champion. But I'm walking out that way. Introducing first, representing the dirty. From Detroit, Michigan, he is the War Wrestling Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the main event here at War Wrestling's Dirty Intentions. I am Jimmy McDowell, joined ringside by our current commissioner, Mr. Dementia. Hall of Famer. That's right, Hall of Famer, Mr. Dementia, that's right. That doesn't carry a lot of weight at home, so I gotta do that here. And what a main event we have for the that World was, uh, that's Championship. That's disrespectful over the title right there. Tossing the title like that, you mean? Yeah, yeah, you gotta show real respect in that if you're the champ. But not surprising out of a member of the Dirty. Now let's go back to ring announcer, another Hall of Famer, Slick Rick Toms. Absolutely, absolutely, well done.
I think something scared the crap out of him. I agree with that. He'll be defending, Jake, something that is, will be defending against Dark Star Matt Taylor. Matt Taylor, of course, a former champion here in war wrestling himself. The uh, first ever respect champion, I believe, wasn't he? Sounds right. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce at this time the pro wrestling champion, Jake Something, has been the war wrestling champion for 457 days. If I'm doing my math right, that's at least a year, right? I believe that that is about a year and a half. At least one trip around the sun. It sounds impressive until you think of uh, the fact that myself and Stamp Lickage have technically been the world wrestling champions for 12 years. <laughs> This is a two out of three falls contest no, for the World Wrestling that. Championship. Well, I'll tell you what, this is exciting yeah. matchups we have tonight. I would Taylor think, getting on top early with his speed. I was just going to say, I think he would have to rely on his speed. Well, he's not going to outpower Jake something because that kid's put together. Taylor takes something face first into that top turnbuckle. Now some knees to the midsection. Well, that's impressive right there, Jim. Big old body slam right there. Yeah, that's a lot smaller man picking him up. That's where you, you put your training in. Running knee drop, going for a quick pin. Something able to kick out before uh, the ref can even get down there. Unfortunately here, Matt Taylor will be facing two men as yeah. it is every time Ripper Blackheart is at ringside. Jake's something a little slower and more methodical than Matt Taylor. That's a very good observation. It was kind of a shot in the dark. Taylor, though, mounting a quick comeback here. Running kick. Rock something. Sue presses him down. Might have been a brain buster. Going for the pin. One, two, three, no. Close to a pinfall there for this first one. That's right. And again, this is the best two out of three falls. Something wants to keep the title. Dark Star would like to win it. Thank you. There's a. I was trying to now. There's a, a chop by. Ooh, making two of them now. He's mixing chops and punches. Look at this offensive fury here. There he goes to the first fist. Fist. They had some forearms in there. One thing Matt Taylor's doing, he's definitely staying on top of Jake something. Yeah, he is. Something now cowering down to the mat. I would think the Dark Star doesn't want to take it easy, though. No, there's what happens. He's just, there's no doubt he'll be able to overpower pretty much any time he wants. Something laying in those fists now. Nice choking him, Jimmy. Yep, yep, choking him blatantly. Let's go right before the fight count. Taylor puts on the brakes, reverses. Nope, stays on the speed. Big forearm. Taylor using his speed, going up top. Leaps hey, for a crossbody. Not able to go for the pin, though. We'll have to see later on. I don't believe he chose to go for the pin. Yeah. He's setting up another offensive move. Or trying to, at least. There's a chair in the ring. The referee grabbing the well, chair. That's why, he couldn't, that's why he couldn't go for the move. Referee going, the referee does get rid of the chair. Is lecturing Ripper Blackheart. Meanwhile, he's missing the uh, chokehold on the other side of the ring by Blake Sullivan. This is 
This is a, no, it's a two out of three false. This is not a no DQ match, which is why the referee is now arguing with, with, with Ripper Blackheart to that three times fast. A chair shot. I don't want to do anything with Ripper Blackheart three times. <laughs> a chair shot to the side of the head by Jake Something rocks the skull. Something is smart enough to know he's got to get back in the ring to, to get a pinfall. Yeah. And after that chair shot, Matt Taylor might be out. Something, though, not going for a pinfall. You would think uh, Taylor would be easy pickings at this point. Well, honestly, Jimmy, I'm not sure how much is going on up there. Something now starting to pick a dazed Matt Taylor up. Taylor unable to even try and put up any uh, offense here. Off the ropes, great move by something. One, two, three. That's the first fall. He is impressive. He's right back on Taylor. Hammering away on the side of Taylor's head, not letting him take a break, not letting him collect his senses. The referee pulling something off. There is supposed to be a break in between the falls. Well, the ref's at least got to be able to check the other competitor for injury. Yeah. Make sure he can continue. Something is being relentless here, not wanting Taylor to try and collect his senses, to collect his thoughts. Well, at least so far, Ripper hasn't physically gotten involved in this match. So far, that's true. Give it time. Well, he slid the chair and it definitely was a distraction that led to the victory in the first fall. Now that Taylor is back wow, up to his feet. What a shot. Wow, jeez, yeah. He just as soon as destroyed Taylor, him. Yeah, as soon as Taylor gets to his feet, he's knocked back down. Now we each one too soon. Yep. There he is choking him with a towel. You know, if I weren't retired. Something a big elbow down on top of Darkstar here, making two of them. And those elbows are finding their mark. Probably wouldn't be very commissioner-like to go up there and just slap the taste out of Ripper's mouth, would it? Um, it might not be the most professional, but I think it would be pretty fun. It would be. I mean, I've done it before. Yeah. It is fun. I'd like to see it. I've slapped the taste. I've dropped elbows on him. Yeah. He's like a cockroach. He keeps coming back. <laughs> Meanwhile, Matt Taylor trying to fight out of this chin lock. And again, as soon as he's up to his feet, gets slugged back down. Something now picks Taylor up with ease. Oh, big backbreaker across the knee. Going for the pin. One, two. Taylor is able to kick out right before three, though. Just showed his fortitude there. Yeah, he did. And there's Ripper again. Ripper choking Taylor while the referee has his back turn. If I were Taylor, I'd try and stay away from those ropes. I don't know how you sit here beside Ripper every show. <laughs> well, tonight I'm filling in for Michael uh, McCormick. Normally I'm not. I, although you bring up a good point, I'm not sure how he's able to sit beside Ripper for every show either. <laughs> a stomp. Well, they both smell similar. Well, a stomp by something out choking Matt Taylor as he bends Taylor's throat. It was Adam's apple right across that bottom ring rope. And of course, ring ropes, ladies and gentlemen, they're not real rope, they're actually steel cables. Absolutely, they're airplane cables. Yeah. Taylor. Taylor's just throwing fists now. Yeah. He is so dazed. Choke across the bottom rope is not legal, but it is effective. Yeah, uh -uh. and he probably still hasn't collected a sauce from that chair shot, too. Barely kicks out right there, kicks out on instinct. But now, going back to what I was saying, Taylor is so dazed right now, he's probably seeing stars. Those uh, punches he was trying to be throw. Dark stars. Ooh, I like it. That was good. They probably would be dark stars. <laughs> those punches he was trying to throw earlier on, catching nothing but air. They were as close to hitting Jay Cortez as they were Jake something. Yeah. Jake something is relentless. Yes, he is. He's definitely not a joke, that's for sure. No, there's a reason he's been champ for 450 odd days. That's right. Jake something, I guess, trying to uh, ugly up Matt uh, Matt Taylor with some fish hooks, stretching away at the face, clawing at the face. Close fist there. Oh, he's getting by the hair now. 
I've always thought that's one downside of having long hair, a long hair rather, it becomes an easy target. Absolutely, absolutely. Only performed with long hair one time in my career. And uh, it did become uh, my downfall. Chest first across the apron. And I guarantee you on the edge of the ring. Well, anything he's doing to the midsection, he's, he's taking wind away. Yep. And there's not a lot of padding on the edge of that ring either. And he, he is not letting Matt Taylor catch his breath whatsoever. Now, these are legal elbows. Uh, they are. Legal forearms to the chest. Yeah. One of the few things he's done legal this entire match. Yeah. Parted. Oh, Taylor explodes. From out of nowhere, that's right. Not sure where Taylor's getting this from, but... Taylor now with the head of steam. Something, uh, something catches Taylor's leg, shrugs him up, but something runs face first into Taylor's foot. Taylor double stomp off the top. This could be his chance. Puts the leg. One, two, three. There hey, is. Taylor gets the second fall. If I was Matt Taylor, I'd get right back on him the same way he did. Don't let him breathe here. We'll have to see whether or not Taylor does that or whether or not he actually... Uh, I don't think he's quite recovered yet, Jimmy. Really. No. Taylor needs to at least distance himself here. Well, the referee has called for the bell. Neither guy is on their feet. We're going to start this third fall with a, with a 10 count. Yeah, they are. Now, of course, any time you're a champion, you can win by count out and retain the title. You don't have to beat your opponent. Your opponent has to beat you. Absolutely. The way you lose that belt is pinfall or submission. Taylor's to his feet. He doesn't look happy. No, he doesn't. I think he's starting to get that adrenaline. Something, though, also up to his feet. And I think we're going to be starting over from scratch here, basically. This is all for the marbles, ladies and gentlemen. This is the third and final fall for the World Championship. Something trying to retain. Darkstar trying to win. They are literally hitting each other right in the mouth. That's right. It's not pretty, Chops. but it's effective. Yeah. Less, this is my kind of match. Left and right from Darkstar. Something shoots him off the ropes. Darkstar gets out of that. Throws something to the outside. Here comes Darkstar. Darkstar, a suicide dive through the ropes. He's got the champion reeling. That's right. Knocks something to the floor. Taking too much time here. Ripper Blackheart looks a bit concerned now. I see those shades coming up. Do you remember when I used to dive through the ropes like that? No. Me yeah. neither. <laughs> you weren't that suicidal as well. No, I, I always liked myself a lot. Yeah. Matt Taylor, definitely a risk taker, and I think that's why the fans love him so much. Wow, a big kick right there from Taylor. Catches something hard. Risk taking is, uh, you win a lot of matches, but it can hurt you too. Yeah, that's right. He's definitely passionate about his matches and his uh, moves. Well, kind of like gambling in Vegas, high risk, high reward. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Well, here we go again. That's right. The fans, at least on the far side of the building, getting up to their feet as this action has spilled to the outside. The referee trying to get them to get back into there the ring. Jay Cortez out trying to get some order here. Yeah. I'm not sure what he can do when these guys get going. I'm sure uh, he does not want this match to end in a count out, so the referee trying to be lenient here. He, he's not administering the 10 count. And so he's just kind of letting these guys go. And go they are, going all over the building here. I am not sure he's letting them do anything. They're close to the ring again, Jimmy. Yeah, they are. Oh, there was just a big kick right to the chest. Jake something not doing well as Matt Taylor definitely in control right now. Yeah, you would think on the outside would be uh, something's advantage, but Matt Taylor's holding his own. Something's back in the ring, Jake Cortez, and here comes Taylor. Well, Taylor's up on the edge of the ring. I don't know if he's ready to get back in the ring yet. Yeah, he does, finally. 
Oh, wow, did you see that from something? Something caught him. Going for the pin. Two, three, no. Oh, no. I believe it no. was. A, I believe that was the same maneuver he ended the first fall with. It was. Version of the black hole slam. Yeah. It won the first time. It was not able to win this time, though, probably because Taylor not as dazed this time as he was earlier on, not as winded this time. No, no, he'd been on top there for yeah, several minutes. That's right. Well, hey, we got a wrestling match again. We did. Oh, wow. That was a shot. That just, that rocked his jaw. Going for a power ball, but no. Backslide. He flips out, backslide. This could be at one, two, something. Rolls out before the three. Oh, oh super wow. kick to the chest. That's right. This could be Taylor's opening. One, two, three, no. Oh, Ripper clamps the referee's leg. Ripper pulls Jay Cortez right out of the ring. Cortez needs to throw Ripper out of here. Matt Taylor has a submission in the ring. Ripper, Taylor rather, trying to win this match. Something gets his foot over to the rope. He's going to have to break the hold. Matt I Taylor believe, had this I believe if the ref would have been in the ring, he would have won. I think so. Taylor think was Taylor robbed had. right there. Taylor was robbed, that's for sure. It just show that Jake something is a fighting champ. He didn't tap out there. Taylor now showing his strength. He picks something up onto his shoulders. Something he was able to get off. Big, Big boot. Yeah. Of the face. Yeah. Oh! Kip up. Taylor is just relentless. He doesn't ever give up, that's for sure. No, big forearm, man. Oh, they're just trading shots. Yeah, they are. Back and forth, this match goes. Rear waist off now. Jake something stops. Oh, oh he slams Taylor right into Jake Cortez. But actually, Taylor was going for an avalanche splash. Something moved out of the way. Taylor, Taylor caught the referee with the avalanche splash. The referee is down. Something with the chair. Oh, wow. Why does he have to go this way? Something just used the top of the chair, the brim of the chair, right on the side of the head of Matt Taylor. Well, for once, uh, now, with the the now they bring out Kopaz to make the count. Oh, he kicks out. Matt Taylor kicked out. Amazingly, I'm surprised he's still conscious. Now a shot to the side of the head with that chair. Let me tell you, these UAW Hall chairs are about 90 years old. And they I think hard. they made them in the factory with the trains they used to make here in Lima. Yeah. They are massive. But wait, Taylor rolls him over. Super what kicks over. Right in the face. Going for the pin. This for the championship, too. Another kick out by something. We're on our third fall and our second ref. Yeah. This is amazing. I believe there's going to be the firearm needed to finish this match. It might reach that point. Well, our second ref is down. Kopaz has been knocked to the ground, too. Taylor rolls through for that submission again. And I think we're out of referees. Where's Shauna Reed when you need her? Cortez is, wait, yeah, here comes Cortez. Slithering back into the ring at best. Cortez calling for the bell here. We'll see what the official decision is. This could be interesting. This yeah, could go I'm either sure way. What happened there. I couldn't see from our vantage point. The official referee assigned to this match, Jay Cortez, is able to crawl his way back into the ring. He just took the rep. He just took the belt back. Well, no, Joe Copas. Joe took the belt away. No, Jay Cortez took the belt away. Joe Copas is sitting in disbelief. I think Copas called for the belt. Well, both referees seem confused right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the original referee in this match has 
disqualified at Jake something. That means the winner of the third That means he retains his title, Jimmy. Disqualification is Dark Star Matt Taylor. However, the only way title doesn't title change hands change on a disqualification. It's by pinfall or submission, still war wrestling champion. Jake That's a shame. Something. That's a shame. By virtue of a technicality, Matt Taylor is getting screwed. Jake Sumlin's got no reason to be gloating. He just took a butt whooping. The crowd wants more. They're, they're chanting one more fall. We don't have any refs left. But he had no route of referees. Well, Matt Taylor kicks something, kicks him again. Yeah. Something's out of the ring. He's not coming back in. Something rolls to the outside. I don't know. I know Ripper well enough, though. He's going to scoop his guy up and get him out of here. I don't know if something rolled to the outside. I don't know if Jake rolled to the outside intentionally or involuntarily from those two kicks. A little bit of both. I think momentum was taken even. He just went. Yeah. Well, Jake Something wants no part of the fourth fall. He saw that a little differently than most of the people here did. Yeah. Can't say I'm surprised. Well, so I'll tell you what, Jimmy, in my time away, I sure have missed the action here. Wow, I was only here for four matches, and it was exciting. So Dark Star Matt Taylor wins two out of three falls, but because he won the third fall, by DQ, Jake Something is able to retain his title. Ladies and gentlemen, for Ripper Blackheart and for Mr. Dementia, Commissioner Dementia, I'm Jimmy McDowell saying thank you for watching War Wrestling's Dirty Intentions here from the UAW Hall in Lima, Ohio. We hope to see you on January 7th for our next event, Lights Out.